Ricardo, thanks for making the time. Um, much appreciated in, I'm sure, what is a, a busy a busy schedule. You've been following the debate on the, the revision of the, the, the EU seed regulation. In your opinion, is there really a need to change them? Yeah, I've I, I been following also the past better regulation process, some 10 years ago, more or less. And the failure of the uh, proposal uh, did by the Commission. And uh, we were disappointed by this failure, and uh, we were waiting a new uh, proposal or a new process for changing the EUC legislation. We think that it's time to do it, uh, because we developed this seed uh, marketing framework some 50 years ago, and agriculture was really different, Europe was really different. We had in mind at the time mainly yield production and conventional agriculture, because what what we had at the time. Mm -hmm. Now uh, the situation is changed, has changed. We have uh, organic farming that should be improved in the next, in the coming year, years. According to the farm to fork strategy, we have to reach 25% yes. in Europe. That is a huge figure, I think. Yeah, and so we need to have seeds for organic agriculture, varieties, for example. And so it's time to make a change in our uh, seed marketing legislation to, to create more openings with regard to the one that, that, that we have. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're saying there is a need, a need to yeah. change the current regulations. What would be the, the key features that you would like to see changed? Yeah, and, and, uh, we, and w when I say we, I'm talking about uh, seed saver organization, organic farmers movement, and so on. We have been uh, asking for a lot of years the commission to change a little bit the situation. And we had some openings in the past. Just to give an example, conservation varieties is something new that happened more or less 10 years ago. And we are using a lot this kind of derogation in Italy for conservation varieties. Then we had the temporary experiment on, on populations that was an, a new, a good opening, but always small derogation. Now it's time to have, uh, let's say, a more uh, general framework, uh, maybe an horizontal regulation, where all the small uh, derogation that we had in the past uh, will put together in a, in a, in a new seed marketing regulation. And um, so what we really ask is not to, let's say, make a revolution. That's not possible, I think. So there will be always space for conventional varieties, conventional agriculture, seed companies, the business as usual, I would say. Mm -hmm. But to have a legislation that gives space to new initiatives that 50 years ago they were not in place, that now we have it in Italy and in Europe. And so to give space to them, to organic farmers, organic breeders, participatory from breeding processes, so new way also to do innovation and uh, to be inclusive. So to consider different type of seed systems at the same time and to find a legal space for each of them. That's really important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now th those are some some, some important uh, changes that you're uh, that you're aiming for. That's great. But of course, we also know that earlier this year, the new EU regulation for organic agriculture uh, was came into effect, uh, 2018/848, uh, how with some very different material, uh, heterogeneous material, organically bred material. How do you see the compatibility? between that material and the current system, the conventional system. Yeah, uh, we have been following all these processes, the different processes in, in the past years. I mean, all together, in one side, the better regulation, then the temporary experiment, then the organic regulation, and so on. With always this idea of uh, changing a little bit our seed legislation, mm -hmm. to put something new, new opening, and so on. And finally, the organic movement, they got this opening within the organic regulation and not within the seed legislation. So, of course, we have a kind of contradiction with the organic regulation and the ongoing seed legislation, even because 
when we finished the temporary experiment on population that ended, I think, February this year, the temporary experiment didn't, let's say, produce a new directive on uh, population as planned, but just ended. And so from January 2022, we will have uh, two separate systems, I would say, in one sense, in one side, the conventional one, and the other side for organic farmers, uh, organic heterogeneous materials, and uh, maybe in the future organic varieties. And uh, <laughs> I don't have a clear picture at the moment about what the system will mm-hmm. perform. Mm-hmm. Because, of course, one of the problems will be seed quality within our organic system. Because if you don't have, let's say, chemical inputs that you can use for treating the seeds, you have to take care much more of the seed. So we need to put in place voluntary system within our organic system to take care of quality. Because of course, with heterogeneous material, there will be no certification. Mm -hmm. So public authorities, they won't uh, certificate in the fields the seed. Mm -hmm. So it's up to us to guarantee the quality. And that's our challenge, I think. Yeah, that's not an easy challenge. Eh? No, that's a big challenge. Not at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good luck. Good luck with that. Yeah. Listen, Ricardo, you mentioned the conservation and populations, and of course, uh, when you're talking about that, you're talking clearly about in situ yeah. conservation, conservation on the farm and in the field. Let's say, but how do you find the synergy between conservation and breeding? Yeah. Um, when we started, we as a Retisimi Rurali, some 15 years ago, working about working on agrobiodiversity, our main uh, world objective was conservation. Mm -hmm. When we started, uh, all our farmers, small initiatives, they talk about uh, conservation of agrobiodiversity, land races, and so on. And then we have seen, time by time, that we have changed a little bit. We started some five, six six years ago to do some breeding Mm -hmm. with local initiatives with some scientists and we I would say copied and pasted this system from southern countries because in Africa, Latin America, Asia, scientists they already started participatory plant breeding projects. I mean I think from the 60s or the uh, yeah or the 70s, but not in Europe. And when we started a lot of people thought that we were crazy. Because participatory plant breeding could be useful for most farmers in Africa, but not for, let's say, modern agriculture in Europe. Because we have technologies, we have uh, private breeding, private breeding, breeding companies, so we don't need any participatory mm-hmm. project mm-hmm. for releasing new varieties. But it was uh, very, very interesting because we had the interest of farmers, in many cases consumers, Mm-hmm. that could participate, and scientists. And at the end, with this kind of process, you can release uh, not uniform varieties, but what we call population, or new land races, or heterogeneous material in the future. So something that is more diverse than the modern varieties that we have in the field. Mm-hmm. So our idea is that in that way, we can put together conservation of agrobiodiversity, innovation, and breeding. Because if we are able to do breeding in different regions with different farmers, they, each of them, can have something different from uh, one region to another. So diversity, mm-hmm. diversity will increase in time and space. And I, I think that it's something that could be relevant for Europe in the future, even because it's a way for us to cope with climate change. Because you don't know uh, the situation that will be in Italy, in Europe, about the climate, let's say, in 2030, 2040. Mm -hmm. But so now it's impossible to start breeding something for 2030, knowing, I don't know, the climate in north of Italy will be two degree more or three degree more, so we can breed these varieties for this climate. But if you have diversity in the field, diversity can adapt mm-hmm. during the time. Mm-hmm. And so the farmer will have a good population now and tomorrow. 
And for us, it's a strategy for climate change. The power is in diversity. Yeah, that's that's the answer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>